Brian, <laughs> I'm, I'm adding Brian of London here for a comment. Because I think Brian is in Israel. Brian, are you there? I am. Are yes, I'm in Israel. You're in Israel. So, I am. And, and I know that you keep up with all this stuff. We've, uh, we've communicated before. Um, so, Brian, what's the view from Israel about uh, the news that there might be a peace plan in the making? And, and, what's, and what, are, what are people saying about Iran at the moment? Well, um, actually, I just I pressed join when you started saying about the Iranian people. versus, And that's absolutely correct. And you don't hear about it. I don't I don't I, that there has always been a an, an underground pro-America <laughs> thing. You know, Iran back in 1979 was a pro-America country ruled by the Shah. You know, it's, it's more complicated than this. And they've been taken over by this Islamic Republic since 1979. Doesn't mean everybody followed it always. Um, on the on the Israel and the peace process, though, the Palestinian peace process, I still I'm sitting here. And it doesn't make a difference for Shia versus Sunni, for, for Iran versus Saudi Arabia, whether we have peace in Israel. It's just not central. It's not central to what's going on in Syria. Um, it just, we're just not that important. So, you know, every time I hear about well, Trump's peace plan, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I just don't get the centrality with which the American press paints it. Um, well... So that's that's a good question. It seems to me that when we talk about a Middle East peace plan, we're no longer talking about the Palestinian-Israel question. That's just a part of it, right? I mean, the bigger exactly. question: What do you do with Syria? You know, what's, what do we do with Iran? And it seems to me that the um, and maybe you can um, inform me better on this. But if Iran became serious about peace. Wouldn't the Palestinian Hezbollah situation also be easier to solve? Is Iran the biggest problem to all of that? Iranian funding of Hezbollah is a huge problem because they're the ones with missiles pointed at my house. Um, so, yes, but the idea to me, it's just unthinkable that the Iranians will turn around and suddenly go do an about face, no matter how persuasive Trump is, because they've got the Quran in their back pocket and the Quran is telling them something different to what Trump says. Um, and, and, you know, same with the Saudis, but coming at it from a different direction, because they've had this basically this battle ever since the, the death of Muhammad as to who's the right Muslims, you know, that battle, you know, Israel's just a recent arrival in this. It, this that's going to go on a lot longer than Trump uh, so, and Israel didn't start but, that. Well, but, but let me ask you this, you know, uh, of, of course there's, you know, the, the religious, um, you know, the religious uh, overlay to all of this, but, but these are real human beings who have to make practical decisions. And even the leaders in Iran, they do see that Israel's just going to be there, right? Do, do, I, you think that I, there's, do you think there's no, anybody in Iran, and I won't ask you to read their minds, but do you think that the, the Khomeini thinks that Israel would ever go away at, during his lifetime or, or the next? Do, yes. Does he really think that's possible? I, I believe that if he had the means make us go away, i.e. a nuclear bomb, he would do a heartbeat, no matter what that means for Jerusalem or the Palestinians who live here. The, you know, uh, hold the on, we, we, we lost a little bit of a connection there, but did you say that if you thought, did you say that if Khomeini had a nuclear bomb, that he would definitely use it on Israel? That's my belief, yes. Now, you know, I, I've been listening to them for 20 years, they keep saying that. Right, <laughs> you know, they, death to America really... It meant death to America, and it meant death to Israel long before Trump appeared. Well, they've also said consistently that when uh, uh, there may be a difference between what they say in English versus what they, they say in other languages. But um, they have clarified, and I'm not saying that we should believe this, right? If, if I were in Israel, I would assume that every threat coming out of Iran is 100% serious. So there, there's a way you act. But then there's also looking at the odds if, if you could be objective about it. And it seems to me that they've also said 
that their problem is not the people of Israel, but rather it's the, the political the political situation, which is that it's a Jewish state and et cetera. Yeah. But the so, people are Jews, and the only way we can express our Judaism is to be a Jewish state, because we've tried living as a minority under other people, and that, that hasn't worked. And, and we got the message 70 years ago and said, no right. more of this minority stuff. You know, America's but, a safe place, but, but not but, the Middle but, East. But my point is that nuking Israel would not accomplish their goals because it wouldn't be useful. I mean, nobody could use Israel after it had been nuked. And they would be immediately destroyed, so it's not like they could take advantage of it. And, right. and they would have killed the people of Israel, which they claim are not their enemies, rather it's the political situation. Whether or not you believe that, I'm just yeah. saying, it would be an inconsistency with what they're saying. So, from the outside, I, I always believe, I believe this with North Korea, and that seemed to have been true. Remember, uh, if you were following the North Korea situation, we assumed that Kim Jong-un was literally crazy. Yeah. literally crazy, and that he would nuke things and die, and he, you know, he didn't care who died and all that. And then as soon as you test that assumption, you find out that he's probably closer to a reasonable guy than whatever we thought before, and then suddenly there's progress. I feel like, as crazy as we believe the, the mullahs are, that if you, if you were ever in a room with them and they could speak honestly, they would say something like, well, I know we're never going to destroy Israel. I, I mean, listen. the, the, the thing is, I've, been, I've read the Quran for a number of years. I've read the, the stories of the life of Muhammad and so on. And I, I agree with you on North Korea because I don't think they wake up every morning saying a prayer that says they've got to take over the world for their God. Whereas... The Iranians actually do, you know, it's screamed from the loudest, from the, from, from the top of the mosque, um, you know, come to prayer and they, you know, Muhammad's farewell address said, you know, I have been ordered to conquer, fight all men until they say there is no God but Allah. Yeah. That is an ideological problem if it's repeated into your brain every day, five times, six, seven, 18 times a day. Um, Whereas the North Korea, I agree, the North Koreans, as far as I can see, do not have an expansionist desire to turn the entire world into North Koreans. Whereas Islam, unfortunately, has shown over 1400 years that it does have an expansionist aim and it does want to convert people. All right. But, but let me let me put this in another context. And again, I will say that if I were in Israel yeah. and even as an ally of Israel, you have to treat all of those threats as 100% realistic. So yeah. in terms of decisions, you pretty much have to treat them as real. But um, I, I like to drill down on this just in case there, you know, it, we can get a better understanding or something. Now, it would also be true, therefore, that mm -hmm. Iran has plans to conquer China in terms of Islam. Is that yeah. would would that not also be part of their grand plan? It's not just Israel; rather, they would like to conquer China. Okay. But do they? But do they wake up in the morning and say, "Yeah, any moment now, it might take a while, but we're going to get China because I, you know, God I, says so." I really do believe that they would go after China, but there is a good theological reason why Jews why it's more important that they cancel Jews first. You know, that that we Jews were around in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, the, their Prophet Muhammad. The Chinese are not mentioned. Um, Jews <sighs> rejected Muhammad as a prophet. You know, we did, and we got slaughtered for it in Arabia and we got chucked out of Arabia. So there's 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 history, you know, and so we we matter more because they know, you know, I think deep down they do know that all right, so I get so I, so I get that there's you know the, a special history and a, and a a special dislike for you know for Israel the the Jewish people among the Iranians or at least the Iranian leadership for sure, um, but there's but still people are of two brains all the time. In other words, people can carry with them their religious belief and and actually legitimately believe it. Well, in their daily life, they don't act that way. That that's fairly common, right? That people don't yes. actually act the way their beliefs, sincere beliefs, 
tell them they should act. It's, it's the most common thing is to be is to be two people at once. And it seems to me that there's some there's got to be a practical understanding that Iran would be destroyed far before Israel would be destroyed. And since that's that will never be their ambition to destroy their own country, it seems like on some level they know they're going to have to reach an accommodation. Now let me let me suggest this: if they could ever come up with some way to believe that they could politically prevail in the long run, um, would that satisfy their religious need or do they have to conquer by violence? In other words, could they ever be convinced that they can spread their Islamic beliefs through the internet, through friendly connections, through immigration? You know, could they ever be convinced that they don't have to nuke somebody or or kill them to get it done. Is that would that fit within their belief system? I it, I think it already does. I think um, the very first spreading of Islam is the the Al Hijra, the, the move from Mecca to Medina, and that you know that was an immigration to found an Islamic state. That's what Al Hijra means. That's the start of the calendar. So I, I I don't believe that they 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 don't necessarily say that it must be done through violence and conquest. They actually, you know, that they'll do it anyway. Uh, that they can, but right. you know, to, to get some back to just one little thing you said there. Um, when you, they do hold this in two ways in their heads. You know, I, I think it's a very important thing. They're not all behaving um, uh, at all the time religiously and thing, but the, the for Islam, politics and religion are the same thing. They're, they're, that's their entire outlook. It's mixed and. You know, we can't take any risks. Uh, the only reason they, they, I grew up as a child of the, the, the Cold War with the Russians, okay? You know, Sting's song, do the Russians love their children too? And I still fundamentally believe that based on the sort of Christian culture that, that Russia came from, even though the Soviets sort of try to suppress that, they do love their children in the same way they do. So I don't believe right. in mutual assured destruction as a deterrent with the, with the Iranians. Um, but it has worked. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that uh, if Iran wanted to ta- attack Israel at the risk of, not even risk, but uh, at certain annihilation, in other words, if Iran wanted to just conquer Israel and didn't care about surviving as a country, didn't care how many people died doing it, they could take a shot at it right now. So, well, they have taken, they were involved in the attacks in 67 and 72, uh, 73. So they've, they've done, they've tried. But since, since the sort of nuclear era, they haven't had nuclear weapons. But that's why, you know, that's why we reacted with such unbelievable horror to Obama, because we just didn't perceive that it, that, that it was going to give us the surety that they wouldn't have these terrible weapons that could take us out in one fell swoop. But, but my point is, they are already acting against their own religion by not attacking already. The, fa- the fact that they would not win should not in any no, way... No, 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 no. There's a, there's a religious commandment to say, if you, can't, if you don't think you can win, you, get, you take what is called a hudna. It's a, up to 10 year, and then it's a renewable every 10 year. It's a truce that waits until the Muslims are strong enough to attack. It's called... It, that, actually, okay. their word for peace, Udna, which is this temporary, it's a temporary restraining order until such time as they feel strong enough to attack properly. Right, so... It, as That's long, what we're living under. But, but does strong enough to attack mean that you, you would attack and survive? Or would no, it be good attack enough and to... win. They're, they're not stupid. Uh, they're very, very much not stupid. Uh, the Iranians are very, very smart people, and they're very industrious, and they, they have the technical capabilities to, to, to fight and fight well. But they, they wouldn't launch, they might launch a suicidal attack if it achieved the aim that they wanted, which was our destruction. No. Our destruction ranks higher than, than I think their survival. So in your view, the leaders of, it, of Iran... If they could completely destroy Israel, but it would also guarantee their own complete destruction, they would take that choice. I think that there are enough 
of the crazy people there, and they hold enough of the levers of power to make me very scared if those levers of power connected to nuclear weapons on, on, on launched ballistic missiles. Yeah, I agree. So let me just iterate for one other time. If I were in Israel, or even as an ally of Israel, which we are, we are, we have to treat all of those risks as 100% certain, you know, threats. Yeah. You know, it, you don't you don't really have the, the the luxury of saying, well, I don't think they really mean it. So so I'm completely on the side of treating it like it's 100% guaranteed uh, risk. Um, and, and thank you for giving us a little uh, background on that. This was great fun. Thanks very much for having me. All right. Thanks, Brian. Um, and you, you can just sign off on your own there. All right, that's all I'm going to talk about for today, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.